Hello everyone, welcome to a special story session today. And today I'm reading The Three-Legged Kangaroo from Uluru. It's written by Michelle Worthington and illustrated by Dave Atiz. And this one is actually published by Big Sky Publishing. The Three-Legged Kangaroo from Uluru. In the shadow of Uluru lived a different sort of kangaroo. His tail was kinked as one of his hind legs and the other kangaroos used to make fun of him. Whoever heard of a kangaroo with three legs, they laughed. This kangaroo from Uluru was best friends with an old emu. Don't listen to what they say, he assured them. What they think doesn't matter anyway. One early morning as light was dawning over the red centre the lonely kangaroo loved and called his home, a rickety tickety band trundled into view of Uluru. The kangaroo and his emu friend greeted the strangers with a friendly, G'day! You're sure not folks from out this way. Can we be of help today? The blonde hair tumbled over his eyes that smiled at the kangaroo with three legs. Not two and a funny looking kangaroo. I think we're lost. We turned right in the middle of the night, but it's safe to say to find waves we should have turned the other way to WA. What are waves? The kangaroo asked the tan skin man with his little red van. The blonde hair shook over his bright blue eyes as the laughter tumbled out as he slapped his thighs. You mean to tell me you don't know what waves are? I know we're off course, but we can't be that far. The old emu squinted left and right at a photograph of water off the western coast of Australia that just didn't look right. Instead of being flat and slow, it rose as high as the side of a hill. What's more, to his surprise, people were riding the hill that was twice their size. With the jeers ringing in his ears of the family who teased him to tears, the kangaroo knew exactly what he wanted to do and said goodbye to his friend Emu. It wouldn't take long and nobody here would care that he was gone. So he jumped back into the rusty old van and said, drive to the ocean as quick as you can. In a couple of days and a few more wrong ways, they arrived in the west where the ocean crashed to the shore from a magnificent crest. Out of the van, the young blue eyed man grabbed his wetsuit and surfboard and his mate did the same. We've got a spare board if you'd like to try. The kangaroo who, when he lived in Uluru, had never seen the water so deep and so blue, grabbed the board and he paddled out with the rest of the crew. He watched for a bit as the surfers lay on their boards, waiting for the right wave to carry them forward. They jumped to their feet and shifted side by side, gliding to the beach, enjoying the ride. Laying quite still, waiting for the water hill, he set on his board to conquer the wave. His feet spread out wide, his tail balanced inside, he was perfectly made for surfing and he rode the waves with pride. He had never felt so good before. When there on the shore, he saw smiling eyes, proud and loudly calling, Malibu, Malibu. They had given, given him so much more than a board, he knew he would never be the same. They had given him a family, they had given him a name. All the surfers on the beach joined in, clapping and cheering for the newest member of their crew. A funny looking kangaroo named Malibu from Uluru. And that's the end of the story. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you soon.